Images are everywhere, from social media to medical imaging. But how do computers see and actually understand them? Let's dive into the basics of image processing. This is video 14 out of 20 in our beginner series and introduction to AI. Now let's start off with the understanding about how images are simply a matrix of pixel values. Each pixel actually represents the smallest unit of an image and has a value that indicates its color. In this code sample that you can see in the first cell, I'm importing CV2, which is one of the most common libraries that we use for image processing and computer vision. Then we can load an image, and the image that we're going to load today for purposes of explaining some of these concepts are actually the star bunny image here. In case you haven't noticed, this image is actually the raw source of the shirt that I'm wearing and have been wearing throughout this series. If you're interested, hit me up and we can definitely hook you up with some more star bunny merch. But, but diving right back into it, let's actually dive into what it means to look at the underlying image variable. As you can see, imread is a function that is derived from CV2, and I save this actual image to that variable, um, also ironically named image. Now, if I actually print image.shape, what this does is it actually returns the underlying channels for our raw star buddy. And specifically, the way that those outputs are taken apart are that the first value will be the height, the second value will be the width, and then the third will actually be those different channels. And so what you're seeing here are that we have a 1024 by 1024 image, height and width, and there are three channels, R, G, and B. So let's dive a little bit more into what RGB means. And in specific, we'll study this by first looking and comparing the star bunny image when it is set to a gray scale, and then we will compare it against um, uh, and against its raw blue, green, and red values. So first I'm gonna import NumPy because some of these do have dependencies with NumPy. And now we'll actually, s we'll run the CV2 function, CV2 color um, in two ways, saving the values to gray and HSV. And so you're seeing here that again, it's keeping the structure, but when I cast it to gray, you actually lose the underlying third element because now there's no longer any RGB. There's only one dimensionality. Does that make sense? So gray will not have three color channels because there are no colors. So now I'm gonna run this here. This is actually showing you what the second channel looks like. And again, remember how there are three channels. So let's go to the earlier one and you'll see very nicely that if I index, remember again, zero is actually the first channel, one is the second channel and two is the third channel. There are distinct and different values for every one of those 1024 by 1024 pixels. These are how the star buddy image is actually numerically represented. Isn't that weird? So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take RGB or GBR really and split those into different values using the cv2.split function. So I'm gonna run this now. So basically, blue would have been the first, green, as you saw earlier, would be this channel, and then red would be this channel. And I've now saved them to these particular variables to take home this message. Now what we're going to do is I'm gonna then merge those images back into a new image titled blue bunny, green bunny, and red bunny. And I'm gonna fill all the remaining other channels with just zeros. That way, only one channel is expressed. And then we're gonna print using CV2 im show blue, green, and red bunny. So let's take a look and see what this generates. So you'll see that this is actually what red bunny shows off. Interesting, though. No? Likewise, this is what Green Bunny shows. And unsurprisingly, this is what we get with Blue Bunny. It's pretty straightforward. And so let's dive a little bit into the actual science. We're gonna jump back a few cells to look at just the underlying grayscale Instagram. Not Instagram, histogram. Too much social media. So if you take a quick look here, 
you'll actually see that when we examine the pixel intensity by frequency, this is a unique structure that captures the grayscale histogram of pixel intensity and its corresponding frequency for the original Star Bunny image. For those of you who remember, gray was actually this original value here, where we took our older image, that is the Star Bunny, and I cast it to a singular channel for then plotting purposes. And so if you're curious, we can also then look at an equalized version of this histogram. So I'm gonna now run this cell. And this is what an equalized image of Star Bunny looks like. Pretty mystical, no? In general, we can always work with these types of variables. And actually in this final section, you can even run something called convert scale absolute value and you can designate alpha and beta parameters. In this way, you can even increase the brightness of the underlying image. And in this case, what we did with the brightened image is actually increase it. And again, this is the brightened image compared to our original image. Like they say, a picture is worth a thousand words. And it's surprisingly helpful to actually learn more about computer vision by understanding these underlying principles. I personally believe that it's crucial for us to learn how to play with them. Another key thing that I'd like to highlight is that contrast is the difference between the darkest and lightest parts of the image. So high contrast images have usually wide ranges of pixel values, while low contrast images have values that are clustered together. You also might be wondering, looking back, why did we actually run this cell, the histogram for equalization or equalization? The reason why you equalize histograms is specifically to enhance image contrast. The reason why is because this redistributes pixel intensities to utilize their full possible range. So if you actually want an additional comparison, let me just give you another side by side because sometimes it's not apparent when you only look at one version of the image versus a second. This is again your equalized image. And this was actually the original image. And so you can see that when we equalize the image, we try to actually reduce that pixel contrast. But then that phenomenon of looking at an image with less pixel contrast makes it seem like it's a little bit brighter that being the image on the right. And again, many of us tend to think that brightness refers to the overall lightness or darkness of an image. Thus, with the final line code, where we increase the brightness of the image, that can sometimes help you make details more visible. These are only beginning concepts, but if you're interested in learning more and potentially even subscribing into my intermediate class, please feel free to hit me up or follow the website. This is video 14 out of 20 in our beginner series and introduction to AI. By the end of this series, you'll be ready to learn more advanced concepts of AI and machine learning, which will allow you to elevate your career in tech and remain in demand in the job market. Understanding the basics of image processing is just the first step in the journey of computer vision. As you delve deeper, you'll uncover the magic of how machines interpret visual data.